Average people will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Let me say that one more time. Average people will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Tap into that Teach Hanley 30% off your first order plus a free gift. Let's go ahead and get it started with this. I saw a video by the president of Microsoft, Brandon. I think it was a president of Microsoft who said, you're going to see one of the biggest threats in the future being deep fakes. Okay. Yeah, it is. And then you saw a similar thing being deep fakes scared the fuck out of me. If there's there's not one thing on this earth that scares me more than deep fakes because deep fakes are so real and the technology is so crazy to where you can literally make it seem like oh some person on video is saying what they voice and they likeness and people can say and pretend like you really did it. Deep fakes are crazy. I have not seen this video before, but I'm reacting to it for the first time ever. Let's continue. Said by Google, Sergey Brennan, you're gonna see what's gonna happen with deep fakes. And then the example of deep fakes was given by the actress from Wonder Woman, what's her name? A gal, uh, uh, gal Gadot. Gal Gadot, right? Yeah. There was a deep fake porn made of her. Then there was a deep fake uh, video made of Trump. Then there's deep fake of Joe Rogan. There's one of Morgan Freeman. Hi. Yeah, I am not crazy. Morgan Freeman. Kind of goes like this. Wow. So the direction we're going with deep fake, right? When it comes down to AI, yeah. where do you see the threat? Is that something you, you think about? Is that something you see as an opportunity, as a threat? And if yes, which part? Scammers are already using your voice and your likeness in order to contact your loved ones to say, oh, send some money because your loved one is in danger and locked up. You need to get him out of jail. Scammers is already, uh, is already finessing. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Deep fakes are certainly going to change the world because what we're going to have is we're going to have a post-truth society and then the only way they're going to be able to tell you what's true or not is some committee which decides what's true and what's a deep fake yep. and then they're going to be in charge of the world and then they're going to lie to you and then you're really in trouble. This world is over. So that's going to be very interesting. Once you get to the point where, what did I say earlier about not being able to trust your own eyes? They're going to take that away from us soon. Then what? Then you're really in trouble. Um, in regards to AI, I think it has to be adopted. Because you won't be able to use your senses to be able to tell the difference between what's real and what's not. We already got people that believe some of the craziest stuff just based off of a narrative or being indoctrinated. And then you input fake evidence on top of that. I'll be having people like, oh, Anton, you could just look at a vlog. People be like, oh, Anton, uh, this person is, is A, B, C, and D. And I'll be like, I don't really see that. I only see this from this fake blog over here. Um, and it's not even justified. So deep fakes. I don't know why the government is not on top of that and starting to regulate what's going on, but this, this whole world is going to shit anyway, so it don't really matter. Inside of my school, Hustlers University, we teach AI with absolutely everything. A lot of the images we generate, even on my Twitter account, is all AI. And what's actually scary about the modern world is, I don't consider myself old, I'm 36, but some of the children, children, I call them children, 17, 18 year olds inside of my school, Hustlers University, they're AI wizards, and they can do magic with this stuff, magic. Like they can literally genuinely Andrew Tate on the moon and the image is generated in seconds. Like artists are going out of business. I thought AI would put truck drivers out of business. Artists are going out of business. Musicians are going out of business. It's kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like to think that with things like AI, there's always going to be some degree of natural separation between the men who are genuinely inventive and killers and the men who are more let me change the way I say it. The lines that. are blurred. I think if you're an exceptional person, a truly exceptional person, you don't have to be afraid of nearly anything. But may, you'll probably agree with this. In my experience, in nearly every business in the world, you have 10% killers, and then you have a bunch who want the paycheck. They do their job, but I wouldn't say they're killers. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we, we live in a society for a long time where I can even, I even tell you now, sometimes when I hire, I'll say to, to my cousin or to my, my COO, I'll say, look, either get one killer or three normal people. Because that's the reality. That's the basic. You either need three people to half do the job or you need one killer to do the job. And I think that those three people who half do their jobs, enough to not get fired, they turn up most of the on time, but they're not really that motivated. Those are the ones who have to fear AI. I think businesses in the, near, in the medium term are going to become killers and AI. I tell them now, I have some, some guys who work for me on one particular company and their sales staff. I was reading through the sales scripts. The killers doing really well. But the average guys have said, you're not doing much better than ChatGPT could do right now. I want to warn you that you're not doing much better than I could replace you with a machine today, let alone in five years from now, for free. 
You need to be careful. So I think it's just becoming more and more competitive. The idea that you can just be Joe Schmo, do your job, turn up. I don't try that hard. It's fine. I think that's all going to go out the window because. And it's already gone out the window. And this is why I keep trying to convince people that it's a class war and it's not a race war. While y'all are so busy fighting these wars and trying to get reparation and, 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 and trying to stay on cold and all of this other type of stuff, technology and money, really, it's only two things. It's only two things because money is the thing. Commerce, not even going to say money. Commerce, the exchange of goods and services in order to be able to feed your face and then determine who it is that controls what happens in, in the world. That's commerce. Commerce and who it is has what is largely going to be the determining factor for whether or not you're successful or not. And so the difference is that when I hear people say stuff like, oh man, 40,000 is enough, 50,000 is enough. We don't even have that no more. Thank God y'all came to the light and seen that $40,000 is not enough to raise a family of four or five, okay? But when you see people and they just want to show up in order to get a paycheck, he is absolutely right. That is going to be the separation between the haves and the have-nots. There will be no more middle class. It's only going to be, like he would say, killers. I say savages. Is going to be people that are high performers and savages, and people. Those are the ones that don't sleep. Those are the ones that success with success. Those are the ones that's that's dedicated, and they're gonna learn from everybody, regardless of what they look like. And they're not necessarily gonna be on code just based off of who you are, but based off of culture. That is what the thing. It, you are one hundred percent right, Santandra. It's classism. It's always been classism. Black people own slaves. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. They don't want to have a conversation about that. They don't want to. They don't really want to look at that. Black people owned slaves. If you're not continuously trying to reinvent yourself, we see people on YouTube every single day. Every single day. They was hot last year. They was hot the year before. And they've completely lost their flame and ain't nobody even checking for them whatsoever. They not even trying to continue because they didn't have the endurance. They didn't have the innovation. They didn't have the growth. They didn't have the opportunity. We see people every day just completely fade off into oblivion and we don't even know who they are no more. The high performers, the ones that, that, that get it, the ones that chase it, the ones that's trying to continue to re reinvent themselves and improve their skills, even if you was a software engineer. A software engineer in 1990 is completely different than a software engineer in 2023. You have to continuously reinvent yourself, improve your skills, get new skills, throw yourself into it. It's a, it's a whole nother mindset that comes with being successful, and it's going to be an even bigger shift and a bigger separation based off a of class and based off a of mindset that determines who's successful and who's not. He is 100% right. Artificial intelligence is here, it's been here, and it's absolutely going to change the way in which we do business. As the world becomes more competitive, as a company, you have to compete with your competitors. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is just where do you cut the flat fat? Where do you cut the flat? When I see AI popping up and getting more and more intelligent in the way it's talking, that doesn't scare me. But I have a way with words. If I was Joe Schmo, I'd be afraid. This chat GPT can probably text your girl better than you can. <laughs> it'll, probably, it'll probably get laid faster it's than a you. Little will. advice for the guys out there. Yeah, right now. just plug it in your phone. That do better. Could you imagine that dudes using chat GBT in order to be able to spit game over the chicks? <laughs> this is a wild world that we live in. I don't want no parts of it. I think I was born at exactly the right time, just enough to be able to enjoy the best of it and then watch as it completely self destructs than you do <laughs> so that's scary you know that's and hilarious. I, I i think that's what the, the the average man really needs to struggle and i've been saying this has been my message for a very long time in all realms i've said for a very long time that life for the average man is going to get harder and harder it's becoming more and more competitive you need yep. to find more and more ways to stand out and be unique and the only yep. way to really do those things unfortunately as a man is to suffer and that's one of the reasons i'm kind of glad now that's the part that people don't want to they don't want to really do it the separation between the people that become great and the people that not is suffering. Suffering gives you thick skin. Suffering allows for you to learn the lessons that, that, that ensure that you can endure long enough to get to the success. Suffering gives you life lessons. Suffering, there's growth in suffering, failing forward. 
So many people don't want to fail and they're so afraid of somebody criticizing them from failing that they never even really step off of the porch. They're so busy trying to be safe. I don't know how many times that I've heard people say something like, I don't want to be rich. I just want to get enough money to be comfortable then that means that you'll never, ever get enough money to be comfortable because most people that wind up getting enough money to be comfortable, they was chasing getting rich. Shout out to Patrice Jean-Baptiste. I'm going to be reading that super chat right now. He says, Anton, that's not a joke. There's a tool that already can be used to flirt via text using quotes from movies. (laughs) Shout out to Patrice Jean-Baptiste. This is wild. Add that God put me in jail because if you look at anything that builds a man into a man, there's a degree of suffering. Yep. It's very hard Facts. to become a man and have a man who's uh, respected and has stories and is capable when he only had a nice life and nice experiences. Facts. It's usually the things that made you the best version of you are usually the worst things that happen to you. That's so correct. the demons I carry from jail, the fact that I can't sleep, the fact that I can't sleep, I've had girls say to me, you can't sleep, you need to see a psychiatrist. And I said, absolutely not. I would be furious if a psychiatrist walked in here and took my demons from me. I don't care if they could fix me with a click, they're mine. And they were bestowed to me by God. And they are mine to deal with and they are mine to fix because that's how I become a better version of me. I would be furious if someone took them away from me. I'm glad I can't sleep. Good, I can try. Which is why therapy is a scam. He broke it down much better than I ever could have. Therapy is a scam. Therapy... And let me take it one step further. And this is why I don't do drugs. I know y'all don't want to hear that. I know y'all don't believe in that. Hey, y'all always say, well, everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is smoking trees. Everybody else is taking acid. Everybody else is doing meth. Everybody else is on perks. Everybody else is doing it. So it's legal. Why shouldn't we be able to do it? Because it removes and it dulls your senses that prevent you from being able to lean on your life experiences that allow for you to become a better version of yourself. You're trying to numb the pain instead of going through it. You're numbing the pain instead of experiencing it and going through it. The reason why you can't compete against me is because you haven't been through what I've been through, which allows for me to endure long enough in order to get to the success. I'm willing to die for it. I'm willing to endure long enough for it. I'm not looking to get overcome it. I'm looking to embrace it because it turns me into a savage. Everybody wants to escape. Everybody wants to try to figure it out. Everybody wants to try to cope more effectively. No, I am. I embrace the things that I went through because that's the thing that made me the savage that I am today. When you hear people say, I went through it and that's the thing that turned me into who I am, it's a reason for that. It's a reason for that. The things that you, and I tell y'all all the time, I tell y'all on this morning show, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. You didn't fail. You went through it for a reason so that you can then lean into it in order to continue to learn a lesson to get to where it is that you need to go to now. I do not drink. I don't drink. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that. Train endlessly. That's why I'm bigger than I've ever been. I'll train every, I'm not gonna waste a minute. But all the demons that have been given to me by God and all the problems that have been given to me by God are mine to fix. I would never ever allow anybody else to take them from me. I'd be furious. Mm -hmm. If a psychologist came in and said I could cure you, I'd say no thank you, I will cure myself. I don't care if it takes 10 years. I'll cure myself, that's my job. And I know that when that's done, I will be more mentally resilient than I ever would have been without you. That's the whole point of it, right? If so Andrew many men. Tate comes through this and he like somehow, some way he gets through it to where he can battle the Romanian government and comes through this and he and he it's only gonna make him bigger. Every time that Andrew Tate goes through something and then he does an interview, he becomes a much bigger mythical figure. And he's doing exactly what they don't want him to do. The more that he comes through it and he's not docile as a result of it and he's not weak as a result of it, he becomes greater and he becomes a bigger person as a result of it. Anything that doesn't break you is going to exponentially multiply who you are. 
men say, I want to be the man, but they don't want to suffer, they don't want to fight, and I don't understand why, because even if you look at a superhero movie, they tell you, even in superhero movies, they make it very clear, Batman's parents died, that's mm -hmm. why he's Batman. Yep. All the bad things have to happen. There's no way to get there without the bad things. I get so many emails from people complaining about their bad things, and I, I don't have time to reply to any of them, but if I could, I'd say good. Good luck, congratulations, <laughs> off you go. Of course she you broke your heart. Of course you're sad, of course you miss her. She's with me now, that's <laughs> life. That's part of it. That's the only way you're gonna get to that level of resilience. You can't become the man any other way. So yeah, I, I, I thank God for everything bad that's ever happened to me and, and all the demons. And I, I trust that he's not gonna give me anything I cannot in the end decipher and deal with. In the end, I think it's a puzzle and you decipher it and you work out the best way to deal with it and you internalize the good parts and you become a better and stronger and more resilient person for it. Mm -hmm. So I have to thank God for every single one of them. Well, I mean, you gotta go through shit to be the shit. That's basically what it is. And, and by, the way, by the way, what you're saying is not a hypothetical. You talk about being the average man. You see this play out on dating apps these days. Have you seen what's happened, especially on Instagram and yeah. on, on all the dating apps, Hinge, Bumble, yeah. and out there, the top guys out there yeah. are getting 90% of the women, whereas the the interesting thing about it is that most people that come to me or most people that wind up subscribing to this channel or even getting a coaching call or joining the Patreon, the link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Most of these people, they came to me because it hurt their feelings or they didn't like something that I said initially. I didn't like you. You made me feel bad. You hurt my feelings. I didn't agree with you. You said fuck my feelings. I got in my feelings as a result of it. And then eventually what happens is they come to the realization is, is that it hit them like a ton of bricks and they want more for themselves because it calls for them to have a, a self-reflection moment to say, you know what, I want to do things differently, not necessarily keep feeling a certain type of way. I don't want to operate in my femininity. I want to start exploring what it's like to operate in my masculinity. Most people that tap into me, initially they don't like me. Ask me if I ever cared. Ask me if I ever wanted a fence rider. Because either I'm going to break you or I'm going to make you a better version of you. One or the other. Either way, it's going to happen. I told a guy yesterday, I said, man, fam, I don't think you want this. I told a guy yesterday, he had his first coaching call with me. I said, listen, this is only going to go two ways. And you need to make a, a very, very informed decision as to what it is that you're going to do because this is not gonna go the way you think it's gonna go. Hello? What's up, my friend, you busy? Uh, yeah, I'm headed to work right now. Hey, I got a question for you, I'm on the live. Mm -hmm. When we had our conversation yesterday, um, how, how, what do you think, how do you think, what would you describe my interaction with you being towards the end? Very direct. Um, I mean, I really, just to be like honest, I really needed that. Um, you said, wait, 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 say that again. You said, just to be honest, what? Well, yeah, just to be honest, I really needed the direct uh, counsel that you had. Um, and just you just giving me the real of my situation based on what I've told you and um, how you um, um, wanted to, you know, assist me and where I needed to go. Would you say that I pity patted or I made you feel good or I ever I, I made you comfortable or anything like that? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave me the real. And we, um, you um, told me the steps I needed to, um, you know, accomplish. And as we speak, I'm doing it right now. And I basically told you, fuck your feelings. First time we ever talk, I basically said, fuck your feelings. Basically, yeah. And I don't want to hear no bullshit from you. Right? right? And then I forced you to make a decision because I told you this ain't really what you want. If you're not ready to work, if you're not ready to be great, if you're not ready to put your ego to side and, and, and to humble yourself and, and fuck all of that therapy shit and to really get to the bag, then this ain't rich, really what you want. Did I not say that? That's exactly what you said. All right, my friend. I'm going to talk to you later. All right. Thank you. A lot of these women out here, you know, I like to bring the receipts. A lot of these women out here, they sit in there and say, oh, my God, Anton, you're so hard on women. You're so hard on black women. Then you don't want to be a guy that's on a phone call with me. 
And it don't all go that go like that because I give credit where credit is due. And I put and I and I, you know, when you're doing something great, I'ma praise you, I'ma acknowledge it, and I'ma keep encouraging you to go that way. But don't come to me with no sob stories. I don't give a fuck about what your father said to you. I don't give a fuck about what your mama did. You a grown man. This is what I'm offering you. I'm offering you the truth. The only thing I care about is your success. You then become a reflection of me after we have that conversation. I'm not here to make you feel good. This is not an opportunity for us to have multiple calls. The least amount of calls that we have, the better, because that means that you fixed and that you actually get into the bag and you make an adjustments. When the women sit there and complain, they don't know what my guys go through. They savages now. They monsters. They got thicker skin. They push. They advocates. They pillars for their community and their families and they take care of their kids and they don't sit here and, and have no fucking complaints about what it is that they doing. These are the type of men that y'all said that y'all wanted, right? Then let me do my job and stop complaining about how it is that I'm holding you accountable. If you don't like it, then stop sending me emails talking about my life is fucked up and I need somebody to actually tell me the truth. When you get the truth, it's going to hurt. But I guarantee you, once you get up from getting your feelings hurt and we start to cook and we start to pee and we start to push, that shit is going to be like, it's going to be like a gold rush. It's going to be like a gold rush. Let's continue. Bottom guys, I think the stats are a third of men under 30 have not been laid in a year. It being average is not acceptable anymore. At, at all. It's not acceptable anymore. And it's not, it's not acceptable in the sexual marketplace, but it's also just not acceptable, I don't think, even in life anymore. Period. You have to diversify now so much to even protect yourself. The idea that you can just be a law-abiding citizen in a country and just work your job and be okay is gone. It's gone. If COVID doesn't prove that, I don't know what will. Yeah. Look at my situation. You have to diversify. You have to be smart enough that you have assets and friends and, and, and capability and, and lawyers and whatever all over the world now. That's the only way to protect yourself. You can't just sit within jur one jurisdiction and go, oh, well, but I don't speed, so it's going to be okay. I don't think it is. I think nope. it's coming to a point where it's not going to be okay. And I agree with him. I think that that's enough. I think that that's enough. I agree 100% with what it is that he's saying. He's basically breaking down the idea that being average or being right in the middle of the pack is not going to be safe for you. It's not going to be safe for you. Everybody is going to suffer. The thing that you have to ask yourself is how bad do you want to suffer to get to the other side of that conversation?